Hello, my name is Sean Gasson, and I'm a carbon consultant with EcoEngineers, and today I'll talk about renewable natural gas as a decarbonization tool. The, the first question in decarbonization is how do we transition to a clean energy economy? The first step to transitioning to a clean energy economy, and one you'll hear me talk about quite a bit today, is measuring and quantifying uh, your greenhouse gas emissions and setting a baseline. For the U.S. in 2018, uh, the total U.S. emissions uh, was estimated to be 6.7 billion metric tons of carbon dioxide equivalent coming from five major sectors, the transportation sector, the power sector, the industrial sector, the commercial and residential sector, and the agricultural sector. The breakdown of the GHG emissions uh, by each sector is on the right-hand side. In order to achieve a clean energy economy, each of these sectors will have to develop policies uh, targeting GHG reductions uh, and transitioning to the clean energy economy. In the US, the transportation sector has uh, done this by developing uh, policies such as the federal renewable fuel standard in California's low carbon fuel standard aimed at tackling emissions from the, the transportation sector. In order to fully transition to the clean energy economy, the power, industrial, commercial, and residential, and agricultural sectors will have to develop their own policies. This brings, brings me to my next slide where science and policy need to be complementary. It's important for uh, ambitious carbon policies being set to achieve carbon reduction goals be developed on proven scientific methodology uh, and the, have these carbon policies set clear and realistic carbon reduction goals. This can be difficult as there's a uniqueness in carbon accounting uh, and uh, differences in measuring GHG uh, emissions from different sources. Understanding how these GHG measurements are done uh, and how the carbon markets work and how carbon accounting and reporting will be done under e these policies will be important to developing a successful policy. Next, I'll focus on uh, biogas and renewable natural gas and how they can be used to, as a decarbonization tool. First, I'll begin with biogas and RNG basics. Biogas is produced from processing organic waste from industrial sources, municipal sources, and agricultural sources under anaerobic conditions found in a digester or a landfill. Under the anaerobic conditions, microorganisms break down the organic waste to produce biogas, which is approximately 50 to 60% methane, with the balance being primarily uh, carbon dioxide. The biogas can be used for heat or electricity, uh, or uh, have the carbon dioxide removed to produce a primarily pure methane stream, uh, which is called renewable natural gas. That RNG can be used as a transportation fuel or injected into the gas grid where it can be used anywhere along the pipeline system. So next I'll talk about how RNG can be used to minimize uh, your emissions and be used as a decarbonization tool. So say your entity has developed a decarbonization goal and as part of that have quantified your scope one, scope two, and scope three emissions and set a baseline. You've looked at uh, your scope one emissions and which are the direct emissions from uh, sources owned or controlled by uh, the entity such as uh, vehicle fleets, or on-site facilities like boilers and furnaces. Uh, the emission 
or the fossil natural gas used in the uh, boilers and furnaces can be replaced uh, with renewable natural gas. And in doing so, you can eliminate your scope one emissions from that uh, source. Uh, because of this, renewable natural gas has become an attractive tool for meeting uh, decarbonization goals for your entity. So as mentioned on the previous slide, uh, your entity has developed a uh, decarbonization goal. You've quantified the emissions of your company and set a baseline and have identified renewable natural gas as a decarbonization strategy. You're now left with the, the big question, how do I find or how do I source renewable natural gas uh, to meet my decarbonization goal? The solution is to define your role in the RNG marketplace. Uh, are you interested in sourcing RNG on a volume basis uh, and replacing uh, your fossil natural gas consumption with renewable natural gas, which is primarily targeting uh, reducing or eliminating scope one emissions? Or are you interested in sourcing RNG on a carbon intensity basis which is uh, more focused on meeting carbon neutral or net zero goals for your company. Depending on uh, which basis you choose will impact how you interact with the RNG marketplace and which types of projects you will try to target. There are three main participation options in the RNG marketplace, uh, buying RNG from projects, investing in projects or developing your own projects. And I'll talk about more of these in depth on the upcoming slides. The first scenario is purchasing RNG from uh, existing projects. There are many projects that are already developed and producing renewable natural gas and many under development uh, that will be coming online soon. Your entity can work with these facilities and develop an agreement to source RNG for your sustainability goals. If you would like to, you can also uh, maximize the value by participating in other carbon markets and monetizing that renewable natural gas in one of those markets. A pro for this strategy is that there is no upfront capital that's typically needed However, uh, your entity will likely have to um, enter into a longer term agreement as uh, current RNG producers uh, typically like to have five, 10 or 20 year agreements for the purchase of renewable natural gas. One of the risks associated with this is the RNG market that you're participating in uh, or monetizing uh, the environmental attributes in may go away uh, or the price demand or demand for those credits may collapse. The second scenario is invest in an RNG facility. Uh, as I mentioned, there are many projects under development and many of those are looking for investment in order to uh, bring those co closer to completion. For this strategy, there's a potential for a higher return, uh, sometimes with a 15% plus annual ROI. You get ownership or partial ownership of the asset and can participate in the decision-making process for that facility. And there's the potential to shorten the development period uh, with shovel-ready projects that just need a source of funding in order to begin the, the construction project process. The cons for this scenario uh, are a potential lack of control and decision making as you have to work with the other debt and equity partners uh, and agree on what is best for the project. Uh, you, another um, risk is finding and sourcing uh, potential projects and developers. There are a lot of projects under development but a lot of those have uh, funding sources already. 
Uh, and it's important to work with a developer that's uh, reputable uh, and knows what they're doing. So as part of this, there is significant due diligence required when investing in an RNG facility, as it's important to understand uh, the likelihood of that project being successful and uh, understanding uh, how that, that project will, will stay afloat. A risk here is that the RNG project is susceptible to volatility in the carbon marketplace, and uh, the reliability of the technology is very important, as uh, the uptime of the facility uh, will drive revenue generation for the facility. The third scenario is developing your own RNG projects. In this scenario, you get to control uh, the process, the, the feedstock, the uh, location of the project, and the market decisions and how that RNG is used and what markets uh, that project participates in. In this scenario, you retain all financial upside uh, from participation in the various uh, carbon markets. There's also the benefit of a positive public uh, relations aspect from developing renewable energy projects. The cons uh, or risks associated with this scenario is it requires more capital and there's a lot more work involved in developing the project from the initial uh, feedstock agreements through technology selection, through construction, and then operations or startup and operations of the facility. These projects are susceptible to the volatility of the cr uh, credit markets and the overall reliability of the technology. Depending on uh, which strategy uh, is best, uh, there are uh, plenty of ways to use or source RNG for your facility. But next we'll talk about a case study where eco-engineers worked with a municipality who was interested in uh, developing their own project uh, as they were interested in finding a beneficial uh, use of their organic waste. Uh, the entity uh, contracted eco-engineers to assist from the initial feasibility stage to the, the major components of project development. In that feasibility uh, phase, eco-engineers assisted uh, the municipality by completing a waste shed analysis to understand the available uh, organic material or food waste from the major sources in the, the area. So eco-engineers uh, looked at the available feedstock and worked with uh, some or surveyed some of the, the different sectors to get a understanding of their willingness to participate in a, a food waste collection uh, program and participating in this project. Based on the responses, eco engineers uh, developed a couple of collection scenarios from a low, moderate, and high scenario for overall collection. Uh, from the, these scenarios, eco-engineers uh, projected the uh, potential biogas generation estimates for the different scenarios uh, and completed a financial feasibility study, which included preliminary capital operating uh, estimates and uh, revenue estimates based on the amount of gas volume projected from the facility. Through this, uh, eco-engineers and the municipality determined that the project was feasible and to begin the next phase of work, which involved site selection for the facility. So when developing a project, it's very important to get the, the find the, the proper site for your facility. This, the, the requirements for this are enough land for the new facility, uh, close to the feedstock sources, 
where minimizing transportation distance can help with cost, and proximity to utilities, uh, where the, the closer you are to utilities, uh, the less cost you'll have in uh, developing your project. So for uh, this project that Eco Engineers assisted on, uh, the proposed site was a permanently closed golf course that was near an existing landfill. Uh, this means that um, this facility was relatively close to the, the major sources of feedstock. Uh, and another benefit uh, to this location was there was a pipeline across the street uh, where the finished gas product could be injected and access the national pipeline grid. Once the site was selected, uh, the next step was technology selection. So as part of technology selection, it's important to understand the capabilities of the major components, such as the anaerobic digester and the biogas upgrading system. It's important to work with a reputable and experienced vendor for these different technologies. And as part of this, uh, Eco Engineers recommends site visits to existing locations uh, to get a good understanding for how the technology operates. Uh, once the uh, municipality had looked at the, the different technology options and uh, decided on what would likely work best for them, uh, they worked through uh, finding an EPC vendor uh, to design and build the facility for them. As part of this, there was a request for a proposal process uh, with the desired technology specified. Uh, and uh, the municipality received multiple bids on the project. The next step was to in interview vendors and compare bids uh, in an effort to understand uh, which vendor would be best for the municipality. Once that vendor was selected, uh, contract negotiations uh, begun, uh, and then after those were finished, uh, the EPC vendor could begin construction. Uh, this project is still under development, uh, but the uh, project benefits for this, uh, the facility is expected to produce 100,000 MMBTUs per year. Uh, with the end use as a transportation fuel. So this volume of gas will displace 693,500 gallons of diesel fuel annually, which accounts for approximately 13,700 metric tons of greenhouse gas emissions avoided. The payback period for this project is six to eight years. In terms of lessons learned and critical milestones, it's important to work with the right project developer and understanding that they are experienced. Uh, the more experience they have, the more likelihood uh, your project will be successful. It's also important to make sure all feedstocks are contractually procured uh, as that drives the uh, gas generation and drives the, the revenue generation for the facility. If the, the feedstock is unsecured uh, and the feedstock provider backs out, then you don't have a project. It's also important to confirm that the pipeline or utility is willing to accept renewable natural gas uh, and understand the cost uh, and purification requirements for that facility in order to have access to the end carbon markets. Uh, and it's also very important to have an experienced team in place uh, from engineering uh, to construction to uh, ongoing consulting. Depending on how you want to participate in the marketplace, uh, it's important to understand how these uh, factors will impact the, the projects that you're looking at. Uh, and how your facility can go about sourcing renewable natural gas.